Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, this week we're going to be making a filing cabinet. This is a two drawer oak filing cabinet. I made it for my grandfather upon his request. He asked if I could make a filing cabinet for him to keep all of his important documents and papers. And I thought I would share the project with you. So if you stick around, we'll get right into it. Hey guys, welcome to the new shop building. Now this is not a shop yet. It's still a storage building. There's a long way to go before I can turn it into a shop. A lot of work to do still yet in here, but I am going to use this building to break down this 4x8 sheet of uh, oak plywood for this filing cabinet. And I've got a set of saw horses set up temporarily right now, so I can go ahead and break this down into some manageable pieces, uh, cut all the parts out for the filing cabinet, and then we can move over to the old shop building uh, where I've got the table saw and everything, and we will finish up the rest of the cuts over there. So let's get started. The filing cabinet is going to be a two drawer filing cabinet so uh, right now I've got everything rough cut but our final dimensions are going to be 26 and a half inches long for the two sides by 17 inches wide. Now the 26 and a half inches that will give me enough room to wrap it in the top and bottom uh, which is going to be three quarter inch plywood top and bottom. Give me a chance to wrap those in and then it will give me um, about It'll give me about 25 inches on the inside, which I want for the two drawers and everything. And we'll talk about that when we get to that step. The width of these is important. I need to get them cut down to 17 inches. Uh, the reason for that is for the two drawers, I'm going to be using these full extension drawer slides. These drawer slides happen to be the soft closed drawer slides. I really like that feature. But what I want to make sure of is that I've got enough room, 3 16ths, for the back panel. I'm just going to use a 3 16 inch back panel for this. Then my 16 inch drawer slide, uh, in front of the drawer slide I want a 16th of an inch and then I need 3 quarters for the drawer fronts to close flush inside of the cabinet. I don't want, there's not going to be any face frames or anything like that, it's going to be a frameless cabinet basically, uh, but I want the drawers to close flush with everything. So. Uh, that three quarter inch. So basically my dimensions that I need to rip down to is 17 inches wide and that's what we're going to do. But first we're going to get that uh, 26 and a half inches cut down on both pieces. Okay guys, now I'm ready to cut the rabbits on both side pieces and what I've done is I need a shallow rabbit on the back side of each piece for the back panel and then I need a three quarter inch rabbit on the top and the bottom of both side pieces to accept the top and bottom of the cabinet and what I've done is for these back pieces um, I went ahead and I went and put my three quarter inch dado stack in because I'm going to use that to cut the rabbits in the top and bottom of each piece. But first, I want to cut the small rabbit on the back of each side piece of this cabinet. So I've got my fence set up to where I am cutting that 3 16 inch rabbit, but I've got it just a little bit proud because I want these back pieces just a little bit proud of that back panel. Um, and by the time I get glue and everything in, it should pretty much flush everything up. So I've got my fence set up. I've got my blade height set up to 3 8 of an inch high. Uh, to make these cuts and I'm going to go ahead and pass the two pieces on and then I'll turn around and get ready to cut the rabbits in the top and bottom. Okay. 
Okay guys, all the panels are cut, rabbited, ready to go. All I have to do now is go ahead and glue the carcass together. Uh, I went ahead and sanded each of the panels up to 180 and uh, that will be good for the inside of this, this uh, filing cabinet. And then when I get all of the case together and the ready for the finish and all, I'll give it a nice final sanding up to probably about 220 before I put the finish on. Um, I tell you, the one thing I'll be happy about is when this shop gets its assembly bench built uh, and so my poor table saw doesn't have to be used as a <laughs> an assembly bench anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll get this glued together and while it's gluing together, we'll start working on the two drawers. I'm ready to start making the drawers for the filing cabinet. Now I'm going to start by cutting the sides of the drawers. I need four of them. The sides of the drawers, the dimensions are 10 inches high, 16 and a half inches in length. So I've got my sheet here that the drawer sides are going to be made out of uh, and I've got the grain running in the direction that I want. First thing I need to do is I've got my fence set up and I need to go ahead and rip this down to 16 and a half inches. From there I can spin it around and I can cut my individual 10 inch drawer sides out of it. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll work on the other parts. Okay, as you saw, I'm making that cut. I didn't have an outfeed table on the table saw, and I, you know, I recommend having an outfeed table. I've got a temporary setup, and what I used to use as an outfeed table is now in another position in this shop, and everything's just kind of set up temporarily here. But I probably will end up making some sort of outfeed table. I would recommend having it. It gives you a little bit more control when you're cutting long sheets like that. It gives you a lot more support and everything, and makes the cut a lot safer. Um, so, just wanted to bring that up so I don't hear anything from you guys because I, I'm very much aware that I don't have an outfit table and I really do need one uh, for that support especially when cutting these long pieces. So now that I have the sheet ripped down to 17 inches or I'm sorry 16 and a half inches in width I want to go ahead and start cutting my individual 10 inch drawer size out of it. I've got a stop block set up on my table saw sled and I'm going to first clean up one edge, square it up and then I'll cut my four pieces out of it. All right, well now that I have the sides cut for each of my drawers, I need to go ahead and determine the measurement for the front and back of each drawer. And in order to do that, I need to know the exact measurement for the overall drawer. And how I'm going to determine that is I'm gonna take both of my drawer slides and I'm gonna bring them over to one side of the cabinet. And then I'm gonna take an internal dimension from the inside of the cabinet to the outside of the drawer slides. And for this particular cabinet, our measurement is 13 and 3 eighths. So that is our overall drawer width, 13 and 3 eighths. That's the number we're shooting for. So now I need to know how am I going to join the drawers? How am I going to build them? Well, for me, I'm going to use simple rabbit joinery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cutting 3 eighths inch deep rabbits into each side of the drawers. Uh, and in those rabbits, the front and back will fit into. So 3 eighths and 3 eighths is a total of 3 quarters. We need to subtract that from our overall dimension of 13 and 3 eighths, which leaves us a measurement of 12 and 5 eighths. So the parts I need to cut are going to be 12 and 5 eighths by 10 inches in height because we know that our drawer heights are already 10 inches. So let's get everything set up on the table saw and we'll get those four parts cut out.
All right, before I cut the rabbits into the four side pieces, I need to go ahead and cut the groove uh, in all of the drawer parts at the bottom for the bottom panel. I'm just going to use a quarter inch oak panel to go in there. It's about three sixteenths of an inch uh, panel. And I wanted to make sure that where I cut my groove, where my bottom panel is going to go, that I have enough room for my little dividers and everything to sit in there. These are those little dividers that hold the folders and files and papers and documents and all. I want to make sure I have enough room for that, uh, which I do. So I'm just, I've got a single blade in here. I'm just going to make my groove cut, slide the fence over a little bit, and open it up a little bit wider till I reach the... Uh, depth which is about three sixteenths quarter of an inch just want a nice fit in there I don't want it too tight don't want it too loose I want it just right so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move over to the rabbit Okay, I ran a couple of test pieces uh, through and I've got my fence set up. I've got my three quarter inch dado stack in here and I've got my sides ready to cut the rabbits into both ends of all four side pieces. Everything's set, so now all I have to do is make these cuts. Then I can go ahead and cut the bottom panels for each drawer, the two bottom panels, and get everything ready to glue up. And that way, when that's done, I can go ahead and get these installed into the cabinet and then I can start working on the actual cabinet drawer fronts. So let's go ahead and process these and get them cut. Alright, I went ahead and I got the bottom panels cut and I just did a dry fit of everything and slid it into the cabinet just to make sure that I had a nice fit, which I do, everything was perfect. So now all I need to do is actually um, glue everything together. Once I glue the two drawers together, then all we have to do is install them into the cabinet and I'll show you how to install the hardware. Alright, the cabinet drawers are all glued up and they're ready to install. Now i got to install the hardware. Uh, before I install the hardware, I want you to notice I put in a couple of cross members. They're an inch and a half wide. I got one in the front and one in the back, and they're uh, level with each other, you know, uh, from the front to back. It's not necessary, but for me, it'll stabilize this a lot more and make it a little bit more sturdy. So I went ahead and put it in. Now, to install the drawer slides, I've got a small quarter inch piece of uh, oak ply, and it's, you know, about 3 sixteenths quarter inch, but oak plywood. I went ahead and I'm going to set that in the bottom because I don't want the drawer slides to be right on the bottom. I want them up a little bit so this will be just fine. So I'm going to set this in here and I'm going to take my drawer slide, set it in here, get it in position. Now I want the front of the drawer slide to be a sixteenth of an inch back. Uh, this front, I want it a sixteenth of an inch back from the front of the cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and set it in there and get my sixteenth of an inch back. Once I have that, then I can go ahead and let me get it set again. Go ahead and get it set in there and then I can install the screws with the right screw gun. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a screw in here started. And I don't want, you know, the screws to strip out. They're real small, so we've got 
one of them started. Let's find another hole here. One more in the back. Okay, with that slide in, I can go ahead and get my other one in. Now to install the drawer. I'm going to leave this piece of oak plywood in the bottom and I'm going to take my door get it set in there and now for these I want these to be an eighth inch back from the front of the drawer so we'll go ahead and Get that in position. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. doing here. I've got the door slide pulled out. Make sure that I have my eighth of an inch set back and then all right now with that I can pull the door out a little bit further and hit the other oblong hole. hole. So now with the drawer in place, I can go ahead and install the drawer slides for the top and get the top drawer installed. And we'll start working on the drawer front for the cabinet and then we'll get the back in. And then all I have to do is kind of disassemble things and get a finish put on it. Okay, with the drawers installed, I can start focusing on the drawer fronts. Now, if I'm, let me think back to the beginning of the video. If I'm not mistaken, I said something about the drawers are going to recess inside of this uh, cabinet and there's not going to be any face frame or anything like that. Um, well, the drawers do recess flush with the cabinet. The drawer fronts are going to cover the whole front of the cabinet. Uh, my bottom drawer is going to cover the whole thing up to about half of this uh, center rail, a little less than half. Then there's going to be a small gap and then the top drawer is going to go from the top. So I need to cut my fronts and get them attached. Now once I get them attached I can go ahead and pull everything out and I can start edge banding everything and getting everything nice and dressed up. Once I get the edge banding it's going to be an iron on blue edge banding, red oak, to uh, match the cabinet. Once I get everything on then I can kind of uh, start doing some finish sanding and get ready for a finish and then I just need to put on two handles I just don't happen to have the handles with me right at the moment so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do for them but the basic concept is the same installing a handle there's nothing to it uh, I'm sure you guys uh, can pretty much figure that out if I don't get the handles installed by the end of the video which I'm hoping I do alright so let's get to work on the front of these cabinets Okay guys, before I attach the drawer fronts to the front of the cabinet and the drawers and everything, I want to go ahead and get all the edge banding done. Uh, to hide the plywood edges, I'm going to put on an iron-on banding, uh, which is a red oak, and uh, it's a real simple to apply, and I'll show you how to apply that. Uh, I'm going to do all the banding around the drawer fronts, around the front of the cabinet, and on the top of the drawers. So we'll go ahead and get that done now. We'll start with one drawer I've already got in my clamp here, and um, then we'll move on to the rest of them. 
Attaching the edge banding is pretty straightforward. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and cut a strip of your edge banding about an inch longer on both sides than the piece that you're going to be applying it. And once you are ready, just nice pressure, make sure, make sure everything is in line. And work your way down slowly. You want to set your iron to uh, the cotton setting which is the hottest setting and you don't want to rest in one area too much um, you don't want to over melt the glue you just want to melt it enough to where it will adhere to the piece that you're banding you want to check make sure you've got good adhesion and once you do go ahead and trim off your overhang and turn your piece around and start on your next piece. Now I'm going to go ahead and get all of these edges uh, banded and then we'll get everything sanded nicely and we'll get it attached to the cabinet. Okay guys, well I'm in the process of attaching the drawer fronts. Now the uh, bottom drawer front has already been attached and what I did was I glued it to the cabinet and I added four screws on the inside in the four corners. Uh, the top drawer, a little bit difficult to get the screws in right now. I'm going to do the same procedure but I've got it glued and I've got it clamped into place to kind of hold it in place because I can't get through the back to uh, add the four screws. So I'll let the glue sit up for a little bit then I can pull the drawer out and add the four screws and that'll be done for that. The only thing left to do is add the two handles and then determine the finish. Now I talked with my grandfather and there's really nothing uh, as far as the color matching that I need to do so I'm going to wipe this thing down with some mineral spirits, get a good look at it and um, determine if I want to go with a natural red oak with just a clear coat because I really like the way that looks or if I want to add some color to it with a stain and then clear coat it and I'll know that as soon as I get this cover on. So let me get this front drawer on and then we'll move to that step. Okay guys, it's uh, sort of a nice day, so I decided to do my staining outside. I went ahead and talked with my grandfather and we decided we're going to do an outside of early American, kind of a darker stain. Uh, and on the inside we're just going to leave it natural and uh, just clear coat it and stuff. Uh, that way it'll help him see the inside like his papers and stuff like that. We're going to leave the inside of the drawers natural and everything. Um, so he just help him see it a little bit better. Uh, so it won't be so dark, but he did want the dark on the outside. So I just finished the cabinet and now I got to uh, stain the two drawer fronts. We're going to leave the drawers natural and the inside of the cabinet natural. Um, and then just put a clear coat on it once the stain is set up for about eight hours. And uh, that's it. We'll wrap it up and uh, call it done. Okay guys, well the project's done. To wrap it up, I'm going to take a couple of these wire uh, folder holders uh, that'll sit down into the drawers and we'll be all done. Alright guys, well that wraps up this project. I hope you enjoyed it. I think my grandfather's going to love it. It's exactly what he wanted. So, until next week, see you soon. Holmes!